So you know my name is Shai, and the last thing you can tell about me is that I'm shy. I'm not shy. My story tonight is a tribute to a Jewish man who thought that the most important thing in life is family. And I want to tell you the story. I born in Israel, and I grew up in the 70s, 80s, in a very small uh, town, very remote, in the middle of the desert. I'm the youngest son uh, in the family. I have three older sisters. And my dad is a was a Holocaust survivor. And um, my family was quite traditional. From a very young age, I knew that I'm gay. I never had doubt about that. I didn't feel uncomfortable about that. But it's not something that you want to share, especially when you grew up in a small place, when everyone knows everyone. And it's a very machoistic and quite conservative. So I never shared it, and I never, tell, I never told it to anyone until I was about 18. At that point, I decided that I want to, to meet someone. So how will I meet someone? We are talking about early 90s, no Facebook, no social uh, media. So how, how will I meet a guy? So I put an advert in a local magazine in Tel Aviv. That was the way to meet other guys when you are gay and at that time. Oy vey, I got 85 responses. <laughs> I was a polite, I thought I'm I, a polite boy, I'm supposed to answer all of them. No, I didn't. But one of them was a letter, quite short and sarcastic. I liked it, but I didn't respond. It was a guy from Jerusalem, and I kept the letter. And at that point, I joined to the army. And I know it sounds weird, but the letter was in my pocket for the entire time. Until one night, when I was in a guard tower, and I decided I'm going to write. So I wrote him a response, and we start to write each other letters. Yes, letters, not emails. It takes time, weeks. And we start to, to send each other uh, letters, and we couldn't figure how we can meet. He's from Jerusalem. I'm from the small town in the middle of the desert. The only middle place in between is Hebron, and you don't want to have a blind date, a gay blind date in Hebron. <laughs> At one point, my army unit uh, set a visit to a museum in Jerusalem. Great, I'm going to meet him. So I called him and I said, listen, I have a few hours. If you want to meet me, come to meet me in the museum. I'm not going to travel in Jerusalem. Just come to meet me in the museum. He said, OK. And we met. It was Yad Vashem, the Holocaust Memorial <laughs> Museum. So for a second generation of the Holocaust, it's a natural to have a blind date in Yad Vashem. <laughs> My home was always a very welcoming place, and we always been encouraged. Even it was even the fact that it was a traditional family, uh, we always encouraged to bring friends. My dad wanted the house to be full always, so I invited him for Shabbat. I took a risk uh, with that. Go for it. Now imagine in your head, Friday night, Shabbat meal, the whole family gathering, the wine is passing between each other. In my family, the tradition is the wine passing from the older to the youngest. And then the, there was a 
very short point that it's, the cup was stuck and we had eye contact between us and smile. The very next day, my dad called me and said, Shy, yes, dad, <laughs> I know what's happening here. What's happening here? I know what's happened between the two of you. You are gay. No, I'm not. I'm not gay. Shy, <laughs> don't lie to me. I know I saw it last night. I saw the eye contact. That was the first time my, my dad literally dragged me out of the closet. <laughs> it wasn't easy. So my parents decided that they are going to a support group. So they made the effort and they went to Tel Aviv and they went to support group and the moment they got into the place, guess what? Their best friend sitting there. <laughs> it took my dad about my parents, but especially for my dad, about two to three uh, sessions to realize that first, it's boring. And second, it's not the end of the world to have a gay son. At least, it didn't bring me a non-Jewish lady. <laughs> Few months later was Pesach. You know how Pesach looked like. Big thing. In my family, it was about 30 people sitting around the table. And my parents, before Pesach, decided to invite the guy, to invite him for Pesach. So he came, and he sat in with us. And you know the gossip, the family gossip. Who is that guy? Ah, it's shy friends from the army. But who is that guy? So the seder is going on, and we got into the point that the meal served. Chicken soup. And when the chicken soup, everyone got the chicken soup with the matzo balls, knedelach. My uncle noticed that he got two knedelach, while Shai got three knedelach. He complained, how come Shai got three knedelach while I got only two? So my dad, rise his head and say, listen, quiet. Shy like Knedelach. He doesn't like Medelach <laughs> because he's a Fedelach. <laughs> Some of you understood it, but if you didn't, ask your nearest Boba, she will explain you. A few years later, my dad called call me to a man talk. Shy, you need a children. Dad, I'm gay, you remember? Shy, you need children. But dad, I'm gay, there is no option for that. I don't mind. Find the solution. There is no solution. You need children. But why? I need grandchildren. But dad, you have already eight grandchildren. <laughs> you need children because there is no meaning for life without a family. So we debate about it, and we thought how we will make it. It was in Israel. We did the worst solution, but we didn't feel comfortable with them. Later on, we moved to Britain, to Yorkshire, and we found a solution. And the solution was to adopt. So 20 years after that Seder, we adopted a, a child, a baby. So here we are, two gay Israeli guys adopting 
a Yorkshire lass. <laughs> Unfortunately, my dad passed away a month before she came. But I've managed to show him a picture of her and to promise him that we will name her after his mom. <laughs>